One of the advantages of growing older is being able to look back and seeing what has transpired before now. And I must say that there have been huge changes in the world when it comes to hunting and the conservation of habitat. We are faced today by huge problems. And I think one of the great dangers is the emergence of social media. Now, this is a force that can be won for tremendous good and for the advocacy of the hunter conservationist cause. And we have to have the backbone and the conviction to be able to confront the world about the facts pertaining to the true custodianship of wildlife and wild places anywhere in the world. And leading the charge there is your ethical hunter, and indeed, may I say, your ethical huntress. Social media means that communication now is more instantaneous than ever. And this, of course, can be a great danger if we have the wrong message going out to hordes of people all over the world who have little to no background about the subject in hand. And the pernicious, mendacious stories that are spewed around the world about hunters having no heart, hunters being akin to poachers, nothing could be further from the truth. If ever there was a body of people, men and women, young girls and young boys, with a truly vested interest in the sustainable future of wildlife species anywhere in the world, it is indeed your hunter conservationist community. If there's to be any kind of future at all, you have to be aware of human encroachment in order to keep the wildlife in the wilds. And here we speak about scientifically based quotas so that the species of animal being hunted remain sustainable. There's one great truth, ladies and gentlemen, and it's the following, that you cannot understand or love or defend, heaven forbid, bequeath that which you know little to nothing about. And if your source of information is the mendacious, pernicious rubbish which can be seen any time of the day or night on social media concerning hunting, then you're in trouble. Words are weapons. I have spent my life as a linguist, as a translator and interpreter, and for a great part in the military context. Attitudes can be shaped by what you hear, by what you're told, by what is ad nauseum repeated. And those of us who are involved in whatever way in the hunter conservationist world, we have an absolute bounden duty to stand up and be counted and convey messages which are based on scientific fact and not on raw, rabble-rousing emotion. There are untold millions of profoundly good and often very highly educated young people out there in the world who indeed truly do care about the fate of wildlife and indeed about the fate of wilderness areas anywhere in the world. Now, it's perfectly understandable that when they're assailed by the often extremely aggressive messaging coming from the anti-hunting community, they feel that the only way for them to show that they care and to show their support is to throw in their lot unquestioningly because they have come to be made to understand that this is the only way that wildlife and wild places will have any chance of survival. The true future of wildlife and wilderness areas lies in the scientifically based, scientifically implemented programs for sustainable use. And that the habitat that supports that wildlife remains intact as far as possible. So to the many millions of young, good people out there in the world, whoever you are, 
ask your questions, become informed about the role of hunter conservationism, that what we're doing is absolutely in the long-term interests of wildlife and wild places anywhere in the world.